Hey, this is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today I want to ask a question. What infrastructure do you use for your APIs? All right, so today I'm coming to you from Reading. I'm actually Green Park in Reading, which is this really nice business estate, and it's got like a nice little lake in the middle of it, surrounded by office buildings. One day, it'd be lovely to have my office here, but today the lake's a bit flooded, so can't walk across the bridge and everything. So anyway, the reason I'm in Reading is because I had two meetings, and right now I'm in between the two. So I have a meeting this afternoon with a prospect that we've been working with for ages like i'm on version eight of the quote that we've done for a moment it's like a long process of getting this job through and hopefully at the end of the day i'll have some good news but my meeting this morning was responding to a sales call not one of my sales calls i got like a cold call from a server company uh a while back and they said who you know when you do work for clients who do, who do you do your servers with and i said well to be honest with you it depends. Sometimes my clients will have their existing server architecture. So, and if it's my choice, we'll either go for AWS, mostly it's AWS, or Heroku, depending on if it's Node.js. Uh, sometimes we'll do it with Azure, if they're already an Azure user, or if they need to use SQL Server, or we'll use Google Cloud platforms. But most of the time, it's kind of an afterthought. Like, I know I need to have a Linux server. I know we need to support PHP or Node.js and I know roughly how much disk space we need and how much memory we need and what platform it needs to be on. But aside from that, I don't think about servers a whole lot. So they invited me to come look at their server farm. So I went to look at all the racks and it was like, it was impressive. There, I mean, if you've never been to a data center, like a proper co-location data center, where they've got redundant servers and everything's like super secure. Like this place, it was like, there was, it was gated, security guards everywhere. I had to give my passport. I had to come up with like proper like identification. They took a picture of me when I went in. They took pictures of my retinas. There was literally retina scans going into each of those server rooms. And then going in and looking at all the racks and it was, it was a really productive meeting. So it was like, it was kind of thing where when I meet with new clients, I want to be able to offer them. You know, a lot of times I'll ask about security. What do you do about security? What do you do about, you know, how secure is this? What kind of redundancies do you have? So it's important to know. A lot of times with AWS, I mean, to be honest with you, with AWS or Google Cloud Platform or Azure, I don't really know a lot about how they work. I just know they do. Like I'm able to spin up a server in a few minutes and we just install everything we need on it and everything is there. I don't care about where it's hosted or where it's located, but it's, it's kind of good to know that. And it's something that I, it's, the reason I'm gonna go meet with them is I'm starting to think about that. So most of the time when we, when we do applications, our servers are, like I said, my, my choice is AWS, even though I find it to be overly complicated. Permissioning on AWS is like, you have to go to school for that. Or it's Azure, like if it's, if it's already a Microsoft shop, I will say, let's do Azure because your developers, you know, if, when we hand it over to their existing developers, they can handle all that kind of stuff. And lately doing a lot of Google Cloud Platform, mainly because it sits very well with Firebase. So, but now we might go with this new company just because I was able to see what their security looks like and, it's, and I can demonstrate to our clients, you know, the security there. But when it comes to infrastructure, to be honest, as a developer, I don't think about it as much as I should. So it's been a bit enlightening. It's been very nice to be able to go through there and see that, see what the security's like. And I'm always impressed when I look at server people, infrastructure people, how much redundancy they build in. All the way to the point of terrorist attack, nuclear strike, how will everything fail over to another server? <laughs> at the same time, I know developers who leave empty try-catch blocks. So, um, so my question to you guys today, I just wanted to share that with you. It was really interesting. I wish I could have filmed it, but it was like totally against the security of it. But uh, my question to you guys is, like, so for me, those are the servers I use. And when I do use cloud servers, I tend to use cloud servers. You know, I don't have like a server underneath my desk or anything like that, like back in the old days. But so for you guys, when you have to build an API, if you have to do something for clients, what is your server of choice? For me, if it's Node.js only, we go with, um, it's Heroku just go straight with Heroku, it's easy to do. 
uh, if we do a Linux server. Lately, I've been going to DigitalOcean, but I'm finding I have too many invoices coming in from different places. I want to consolidate them all. Otherwise, we go to uh, EC2 instances of, uh, of Linux servers, unless we need a Microsoft server. Microsoft servers, I'll either do it through Azure or I'll do it through DigitalOcean. But for you guys, what servers do you use? Uh, I'd be really interested to know that. Anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys again tomorrow.